Welcome to the month of May. Hallelujah. I just want to announce to you that this is our month of divine visitation. This month is your month of divine visitation. Wherever you are, can you just take that into your spirit by shouting a big amen? We're receiving God's visitation and his salvation in every area of our lives. Hallelujah. Welcome to tonight's first day of the prophetic and revelation prayer gathering. If you've been fasting, God bless you. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. In this season, the Holy Spirit is doing his work to renew our strengths right now. In the areas that we're feeling weak, our strength has been renewed. Hallelujah. Just join me as we open this service in prayer this morning, in this evening rather. Father, we thank you. Ancient of days, we adore you. King of kings, Lord of lords, I am that I am. Elohim God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who never slumbers nor sleeps. The one who says, peace be still and know that I'm God. You're the one that changes times and seasons. The unchanging changer. The same yesterday, today and forevermore. We exalt you, Father. Father, we thank you for bringing us through the month of April. And here we are standing on the first day of the month of May. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh in our lives. Thank you for being Jehovah Shalom. Thank you, Lord, for being Jehovah Rapha. Taking the diseases of Egyptians away from us. We exalt you, Lord. This evening, Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit into our midst tonight. Holy Spirit, take control. Help us pray the heart of the Father in this prayer meeting. As your servant speaks your word, the word that you've laid on his spirit, let it come with power. Lord, let faith be birthed in the hearts of all who are listening. We give you praise. We honor your name. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're just going to have our sister, Sister Esther, just lead us in a couple of songs. Open up your spirit and just sing wherever you are and just worship God. Hallelujah. Sister Esther. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus we, are we are grateful. grateful. Thank, Thank you for you your love. love. We are grateful.
because of you that we are alive and well. It's all because of you that we know this pandemic will not bring us under. It's all because of you that we know the future you have promised will come to be. It's because of you that we have made it to the second day of the month of May. 
We are grateful for January, for February, for March, for April. Thank you for bringing us into May. Lord, we are gathered to you tonight to seek your face. Say you shall seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. We receive grace to seek you with all of our hearts tonight. And thank you because you are the God who answers prayers. I know you will answer us. And you will be glorified. You will be honored. And you will be admired in our lives. Thank you, Holy Spirit, as you give us help to pray as we ought to pray. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Esther. Welcome to the second day of our prophetic prayer gathering for the month of May. As we said yesterday, God has told us that this month of May is our month of visitation. Is the month when God is visiting us. And we give him all the glory, all the praise, and all the adoration. Our test today for this prayer gathering is found in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 1. Book of Luke, chapter 1, I will read from verse 1, read Luke chapter 1 from To take it in context, let me read from verse 70. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant to us that we've been delivered from the hand of our enemies, that we might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. It's first of all said in verse 16, it said, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up for us a horn of salvation in the house of his servant David. Praise the Lord. Visitation. This month is our month of divine visitation. What does visitation mean? I know somehow we all know what visitation is. Visitation in the context in which we are talking today is the appearance of coming or coming of the divine, the appearance or the coming of God, or the appearance of coming of the spirit of God or an influence of God. 
It could be for the administration of comfort or aid. It could also be for the administration of affliction or punishment. God's first major visit beyond the creation was the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we read in our text, he said, he says, God has visited his people. But when God came, it was for the administration of what we now call redemption or salvation. God came to redeem his people. This first visit of God is the basis for every other visit that man can expect from God. And anybody who have not embraced this first visit will have no basis of expecting another visitation from God. And let's look at what the Bible says are the benefit or the outcome of this first visit. He says he has raised a horn of salvation for us. He says he has redeemed his people. So the first purpose or the first outcome of God's visitation to humanity through Jesus Christ was redemption. And what does redemption mean? It is an act of atoning for a fault or mistake. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every glory that could come to God to humanity, we missed it because we sinned, we rebelled against God. And then Jesus came to atone for all the fault, the sins of humanity, all our mistake. Then redemption also means deliverance or to rescue, to deliver from evil or to rescue. Deliverance from, from sin or what we call salvation. Deliverance from sickness, from poverty, from confusion, from trouble, from failure. So, redemption is also deliverance or rescue. Deliverance, I mean, redemption also means purchase or to repurchase something that's been sold or something that's been lost. That's what redemption means. So, the first thing is redemption. Jesus, the visit of God brings redemption. Redemption from sin. Redemption of our souls. And also it brings redemption of whatsoever must have been lost. Whatsoever the enemy has stolen. So, in this month of redemption, we believe God, many souls shall be saved. Many souls shall be brought, I mean, in this month of vis uh, visitation, divine visitation, many souls shall be saved. Many people shall be brought into the kingdom of God. Then apart from that, he also says in verse 70 that he wants us to be, he, the, the purpose of that visitation is that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. As long as we are in this world, we will have an enemy. Our chief enemy, arch enemy, is Satan. And of course, Satan has agents. He has people who serve his purpose. Human agents, spiritual agents, or demons, or evil spirits who are, they are responsible for all the wickedness, the sorrow, the pain, the affliction, the denial, the corruption, the wickedness that's going on 
all over the world today. And no human being is exempted. At one time or the other, we all uh, get acquainted or, 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 or we are all somehow afflicted by this enemy. But Jesus came. Jesus, God visited us by sending Jesus to redeem us from all our enemies and all who hate us. And there are people who hate you. They hate your God. They hate your success. They hate your peace. They hate your joy. They hate seeing your family being in harmony. They, they hate to see you love. And because they hate it, they will employ any power, any force, any means they can to steal that joy and to destroy that joy. But Jesus came. God visited us through Jesus in order to save us from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Glory be to God. No matter how vicious that enemy is, and it doesn't matter who that enemy is, when God visits you and he has in Christ Jesus, the enemies of your life are made powerless and they are not able to perform their evil counsel. Hallelujah. Then the third thing that the visitation of God brings, he says in verse 72, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. When God's visitation comes in your life, the promises of God are fulfilled in your life. The covenant of God are reenacted in your life. And the covenant of God, the promises of God are all embracing. God summarized it in Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to give you an expected end. We also see a kind of summary in Deuteronomy chapter 28. God put a little bit of details into what this covenant embraces. Let's, let me just read a few to you so that it can help us to pray. Remember that in the covenant, we have, we have our part and God has his part. Our part is to diligently obey, diligently follow God, follow his instruction. Remember, it, the Garden of Eden was a paradise of joy, paradise of abundance. As, for as long as Adam and Eve kept the instruction God gave them. But the day they allowed the devil to deceive them and they disobeyed God's instruction, Paradise was lost. Thank God that God visited man by Christ Jesus. And once you embrace that visitation, you receive that salvation, and you begin to diligently follow the word of God. Promises of God, the covenant of God, begin to hold and speak in your life. Verse 1 of uh, Deuteronomy 28 says, Now, it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Glory to God. Don't worry about the pandemic and the shutdown in the visitation that God is bringing to us. God is reenacting this covenant promise. God is going to set us up above nations. When he says nation, nations simply mean people group. God can raise you up at this time to be above everyone in your lineage, in your household, in your town, in your state, in your country. This is the time of lifting for the children of God. Remember, the word of God says, when men are cast down, then shall we say there is a lifting up. 
Stop looking at the pandemic and the lockdown, the fall in oil prices, the collapse of economies, the disaster of the world is the prosperity of God's children. So what you get depends on where you are looking at this time. But hear the word of God. God says he will set us high above all nations of the earth. And these blessings, glory to God, and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Remember the condition, you obey the voice of the Lord your God. You follow his word. You line up your life with his word. Hallelujah. God is never locked down. God is never affected by any pandemic. Glory to God. God is working. And what is God doing? Fulfilling his word, making good his word to his people. Glory to God. So it's take over time. It's overtake time. Maybe God is slowing down the world so that his people can overtake. Glory be to God. That's what God is doing at this time. So be careful how you are thinking and what you are looking. We look at the word of God. And God now began to say, blessed shall you be in the city. And blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground and the increase of your heart, your business, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. There should be food, abundant. Blessed shall, be, shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessings in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand to do. And it will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Glory be to God. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And this is a good time for them to see. You appreciate light when there is darkness. Glory to God. I remember what he says in Isaiah. He says, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you. So don't just focus your eyes and be neck deep in the darkness that is covering the earth, the pandemic. God said it. When that is happening, look beyond it. The Lord will arise upon you and his glory shall be seen in you. It's glory time for you, children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Don't worry yourself how it's going to happen. God knows how to fulfill his word. It's not locked down. He's walking. Hallelujah. So, he says, all shall see that you are called by the name of God. God is going to make a difference. Remember during the pandemic, during the disaster, during that visitation in Egypt, Israel was having a good time. Israel was having his most blessed season. All people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. Glory to God. You may wonder how is God going to do it very, very soon. Those things that people have accumulated and acquired and, 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 and uh, stocked up, they are going to begin to give them out. Remember when God's people were to leave that night, the Egyptians gave them every, anything they wanted, gold, silver, everything they wanted. They left enriched, and God is still in the business of doing such things even today. So the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. He will bless you in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, whatever you do, in the produce of your ground. Many of us, we need to return to farming in this time because that's the future, especially for Nigeria and Africa. 
It says, God will bless you in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, heaven's treasure, the heavens, to give the rain on your land in this season and bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Praise God. All this and many more are the things that you receive that come to you when you are visited by God. The Bible says in that look that he came to reenact the covenant and to fulfill his promise, the promise which he made and spoke about through the mouth of his holy prophets. So all the promises of the scripture, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, when God's visitation comes, when it comes, those things are fulfilled in your lives. Then in verse 75, it also tells us another benefit of God's visitation. He says, uh, let's read it from verse 74. It says, to grant unto us that we've been delivered from the hand of our enemies might serve them without fear. Elimination of fear. Glory to God. When God visits you, <laughs> there is nothing more to fear. God eliminates all kinds of fear. You know, there are 366 fearness in the Bible. God takes away fear from our lives. May you experience God's visitation this month of May in the name of Jesus. And may all your fears be re removed in the name of Jesus. He says it eliminates the visitation of God, takes away fear. And he says also that we might serve him in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. When God visits you, you have capacity to walk in righteousness. You have capacity to walk in holiness. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. The power of sin is broken. You are able to walk in step with God by his spirit. Wow, what a month God has brought us into. As God visits us, we are going to see, we are going to experience in a new way all the blessings that accrued with the first visit when he visited us through his son. And all through eternity, that first visit continues to have consequence. It continues to have an outcome that you and I can press into. And as God is emphasizing to us that this month of May is a month of visitation, divine visitation, let all of us first and foremost go back to this first visitation and look at all the consequences, the outcome of that visitation that I've enumerated. And let's lay hold on those outcomes so that they will become our experience. They are written so that they become our experience. They are written so that by faith we could lay hold we, we could lay hold on these things. May your life be proof, evidence of God's visitation throughout this month of May in the name of Jesus. You know that faith is what gives us access to the promises of God. Faith is what gives us access to the promises of God. So I want you by faith, as we go into prayer right now, to lay hold upon this promise of his visitation and the outcomes of God's visitation in our lives. Let's lift up our hands and our voices right now and begin to give him praise again. Let's give praise to the Almighty, praise him for who he is, is the El Shaddai, the all-sufficient one, the all-bountiful one. He is the compassionate savior. He is loving. He is kind. He is merciful. 
He is awesome in power. He is glorious in holiness. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship. Lord, we honor you. Let's give him thanks again for who he is. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for, let's thank him for loving us. Let's thank him for being merciful to us. Let's thank him for being kind to us. Let's thank him for his constantly thinking about us. We give you thanks, Father. Let's thank him again for his grace over our lives through January, February, March, and April. Let's thank him for bringing us to the month of May. We are grateful and we thank you. Thank you for all you did in January, all you did in February, all you did in March, all you did in April. Thank you for graciously bringing us into this month. Let's thank him for his mercy over us throughout this pandemic. God has kept us. He's been merciful. Let's thank him. Thank you, Father. We bless you, Lord. We magnify you. It's been pretty, it was expected that by now, the story we are telling now wouldn't have been the story we are telling in Nigeria, in Africa, that our people will just be dying in drooms. That God has been merciful, and I know he will continue to be merciful. Let's give him thanks. Once again, lift your voice to the Lord and say, Lord, I receive this month as month of divine visitation. Call upon him. Father, visit me. In the name of Jesus, according to the promise that you have brought to us right now, Lord, I receive your visitation. I receive a fresh visitation of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, visit me. Father, visit my family. Visit our church, Lord. Visit our church, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let's cry to God. Visit our nation. <laughs> our nation needs a visitation of God. Both ways. You know, visitation could be to administer help, aid, to administer salvation. It also could be to administer judgment. Both ways. For some, God needs to come and administer aid. Come and administer comfort. Maybe for some, those who have rejected him, who have been brutally wicked, who have plundered, who have robbed and cheated and created pain for many people. God may be visiting them in judgment. When he visited Egypt, he visited Pharaoh with judgment, he visited his people with comfort and deliverance. Ask God, visit us. Visit me as your child in your com in your I am that minister comfort and I minister aid for my life in the name of Jesus. Visit our nation, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We give you praise, our God and King, the exalted Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you for one minute to just pray in the Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit help you pray for God's visitation in your life this month. Ya raba shekete prorodo, yanga la basanta raba yekete robo satala, lando robo bostara, zeko kompariasi, rakosta raba yanga, lendo robo soto, raba shende kere busuta rai, lando raba sanga raba shekari basanta. Lendo robo bobo sanga la ba shekere busoto landaria handiria lendo roba sankaria yanda raba shukari ba santa rakuria kari ba city pray the spirit pray the spirit don't be weary lenda sutaya la roba shekari ba santa raya landa raba suta riba yanda yanda rasutu bo sekereka keep praying it's not yet one minute keep praying in the spirit. When praying, one minute can be so long. La kuma kahini, raba shanda lastiri, rebo soto roko sintaria, lende rebo santa kuria, ramba shekede, ramba santaria, lendo roba sukari ba shenda lika sata. Thank you, Father. 
Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Visitation brings redemption, salvation. Yes, I know most of you are listening to you probably have given your life to Christ. Your sins, you are already redeemed from your sins. But that's not the end of redemption. Some of you need to be redeemed. Maybe accidentally, you have contacted COVID. You can be redeemed from it. You can be redeemed from sickness. You can be redeemed from poverty, loss of job, loss of business. One of my daughter was sharing a beautiful testimony with me just yesterday. Their company was locked down. Within that one month of lockdown, she has gotten a job that has placed her in the place where she's believing God for in another five to ten years. God is just an incredible, can you imagine? The lockdown, and the lockdown gave her opportunity to get a job that is a dream for the next five, ten years of her life. God is at work. I'm sharing with you a living testimony that one of my daughters have just shared with me just yesterday. Yours is coming in the name of Jesus. So if you have lost your job, part of redemption is restoration. If your company has folded, part of redemption is restoration. You are going to pray. Father, let visit me with redemption. This month, visit me with redemption. It could be the redemption of your soul from sin. It could be redemption of your body from sickness. It could be the redemption of your family. The war is raging in your family right now. The enemy wants to break that marriage. Ask God to visit your marriage with redemption right now. The enemy wants to sift your children away from you. Get them into drugs. Get them into rebellion. Maybe that teenager. Lord, visit my family with redemption this month. The family economy has collapsed. It's now difficult to feed. Brave God, visit my family with redemption. Visit my business with redemption. Visitation brings redemption. He has visited his people and he brought redemption. Ask God, this month, visit me again. Let there be redemption in all areas of my life. Father, where redemption is needed, visit me with redemption. In the name of Jesus, bring salvation. Thank you, precious Father. Bring salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, blessed be your name. We give you praise, Lord. Be exalted, our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Apart from salvation, when God visits, the Bible says, He saves us from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. There's nobody who doesn't have enemy. If Satan has not sent one of his agents, he himself is there. He hates you. Huh? And the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, he only comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. So, the gods, when God visits, he saves us from our enemies and all who hates us. He saves you from Satan. He saves you from his demon spirits, wicked spirits. You remember Job? The devil just came one day, and everything this righteous man had, demons came and destroyed them, killed his servants, destroyed, killed his children, create it. it uh, uh, I don't know what he used, maybe it's tornado or whatever. But the house fell on them and they all died. All business is destroyed. So don't say you don't have enemy. If Satan has not visited you, <laughs> remember what he said to God. God said, Where are you going? He said, From running to and fro all over the world. So the Bible says, You adversary the devil like a roaring lion, goes about seeking him. He may destroy whom you must resist steadfast in faith. Say, Father, visit me this month. 
Redeem me from all my enemies. Save me from all my enemies and all who hate me. Save me from Satan. Save me from all demon spirits, all agents of hell, human agents, spiritual agents, all who hate me, all who hate your purpose in my life, all who hate my destiny, all who hate my success. Lord, in the name of Jesus, visit me this month and save me from all enemies and from all who hate me, known and unknown. In the name of Jesus, Father, I receive your visitation. I receive your salvation from enemies, from wickedness, from evil. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, thank you. Declare no weapon formed against me this month shall prosper. Every mouth of power that wants to rise against me, judgment, I condemn. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And he also said to remember his holy covenant. Hallelujah. To perform the mercy promised. So you are going to pray. Father, perform your mercy. Every promise. Especially those promises you've been holding on to. You've been believing God for. Lord, this month. Let this month be the month of the performance of the promise in my life. Lord, Mention those promises you have been believing God for. Lord, let this month be the month of performance of promises. In the name of Jesus. Lord, promise of prosperity, promise of breakthrough, promise of promotion. Hallelujah. Promise of favor, promise of wealth transfers. Glory to God. People will be bringing something and say, pay when you can. Just take it. Just take it. Pay when you can. Promises of wealth transfer. Glory be to God. Pray. Lord, let this month be the month of visitation in the fulfillment of mercy and promises. Let there be performance of promises. And pray. Lord, let your covenant speak anew in my life. Let your covenant speak in my life this month. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We give you praise. Let's begin to thank him and give him praise. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. That God who answers prayers, blessed be your name. Thank you. Wherever you are, lift your hand to the Almighty as I pray. Father, thank you for the month of May, this month of visitation. In Jesus' name, we receive your visitation. Because we believe your word, the God who performed the counsel of messengers, who confirmed the word of his servants and performed the counsel of messengers. I take counsel and speak the word that in Jesus' name, your children will experience divine visitation that will bring salvation in all areas of life where they need your salvation right now. Lord, your visitation that will bring deliverance from all enemies and all who hate them. That will bring destruction to the works of the enemy. That will bring, for this purpose, the Son of God has manifested that he might destroy the works of Satan. Your visitation, Lord, that will bring fulfillment of promises and, Lord, your mercies in the lives of your people. All those expectations that have lingered for months and for years. This month, they shall be performed in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, that your covenant will be reenacted and that the covenant of God will speak in the lives of all your children who are hearing me now. Lord God Almighty, when men are cast down, then shall we say there's a lifting up. I decree that in this time of being cast down, there is lifting for your children. In the name of Jesus, that this season of world disaster will be the season of the prosperity of your children in the name of Jesus. Be magnified. Be glorified. This month will bring you spectacular testimonies in the name of Jesus. And this month, Father, we pray that your mighty hand by your visitation, the pandemic will be brought to a halt. 
this month of May, COVID-19, in the name of Jesus, you are brought to a halt. Your power is broken. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Visit our nation. Bring a divine turnaround. In the name of Jesus, politically, economically, socially, turn Nigeria around by your visitation. Whichever dimension of the visitation is needed anywhere, Lord, to bring it turn around, we receive it with thanksgiving and with praise. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and his covenant rise upon you. The Lord give you peace in the name of Jesus. So tomorrow is the final day of this prophetic prayer gathering. So I look forward for you to tune in again by the same time. Remember on Sunday, tomorrow, we're going to have service in the morning. We're going to broadcast the service in the morning. And we're going to broadcast also the prayer garden in the evening. See you tomorrow. The Lord bless you.